So this series of the conservation games has come to an end. Uh, we've had 37 matches in total played um, and it's been a huge amount of fun. Uh, and we've got the usual roundup uh, of the last 10 matches for you, match 27 to match 37, uh, starting with the, with the sports questions. Oh, ring. Right, ring finger, you've lost the toss, so uh, Grips has won the toss. Grips, would you like to bowl first or bat first? That's an easy one, Gumba. Didn't you make 60 odd in the second innings? Yes, it was so a better debut, debut than it. yours, Gumba. It's up to you, Trevor, to decide what number I batted. Well, he, he definitely didn't bat in the top order. Huh? And just saying, Alistair, I think in, in, in both tests and ODIs, I had a better debut than you. So I'm going to say you batted at nine. Nine. <laughs> Nine. Are you say, yeah. So he was picked as a no. batsman and he batted number nine. That's why OGs never won the league, Trevor Zipper. Well, according to Google, it was different. <laughs> Are you admitting to cheating? You said George. Oh, no, 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 no. I did <laughs> my research. I did, I did my research. <laughs> I think you guys are used to reading things upside down, maybe. It was number six, Chris. <laughs> I don't even know this one. Oh, well, thanks a lot, eh? That's, <laughs> if you don't know, then I'm absolutely uh, buggered. I don't know. Uh, 27? 26? 27 back. I was 27 back in 2011. Make me feel quite old, yeah. <laughs> no, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Let's change that. 20. <laughs> Have another go. You stay with us because I'm apparently looking, yeah, 39. The commentators called you Peter Unglove. You, it is legend that you had 23 loves in Coventry. Please, can you name seven of them? <laughs> can you please uh, just <laughs> come back with the cursive? <laughs> Okay, I was actually uh, looking, at, pulling your leg there, Peter. I was looking at my uh, script and I, wondering. I, I was just wondering which 22 that I don't know. Okay, but I was gonna dig down. I was gonna dig deep. I was nice one, dig John. Down. Uh, it was three sets of brothers playing in the same test match, first ever, and probably will never be broken. Um, they were me and my brother, Gavin, uh, Andy and Grant Flower and Paul and Brian Strang. What was the record? Uh, the record was uh, breaking a 32 year spell uh, of a away player scoring at Enfield three goals. So that was some, some sort of a, an achievement also personal. Uh, being an African boy uh, coming to Enfield, it was Mind you, uh, uh, Liverpool was also uh, is, is my favorite team since young age. And uh, I remember after the game, my friends that I played with at Coven, the field pub, we went to Liverpool and he asked me, why you score three against us? I said, hey, that's where my bonus is. How did I know you were going to ask that question? <laughs> Lucky guess. 74, 70. Two, seventy-five, seventy-three. 75, 73. So it's a fair, fair thing. It's a wonder you're happy I give him the points for that. Oh, sure, he can take them. Ooh, ooh, I do not know this one. <laughs> I think I know the person who won it, the skipper. Uh, it was, I think it was uh, Robin Knox Johnston. Uh, I can't confirm that. Wow, what's his book? Ah, uh, jeez, man. I saw this. Um, I saw this, man. Um, Marandera. <laughs> well done. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Seriously, and I won't give you one gram either way for this. I expect you to know it on the dot. Deep as <laughs> As intelligent as rugby players are. Oh, man. 
and that's the maybe 800 800 no ways no ways that's too light you know it's i'd say about a kilo i'd say a kilo think about it it's related wow wow sort of uh, careful he's trying to throw maybe, he's trying to throw you a curveball nick it has green grass it has Not ball to, uh, going to say tennis. Well, yeah, we, play, yeah. we play cricket and bowls. Gee, I tell you, I was going to go rugby at one stage, looking at streaky. So I'm always batted twice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 105. Cheapest. Nick, he's definitely on Google. I'm telling you. Um, <laughs> his son, his son did the back there with pieces of paper Nick, like this. Uh, well, I'm going to show you this. <laughs> and and <laughs> Harry, <laughs> Harry's there. And he's quickly uh, writing it down. Uh, Tracy, next question. Uh, my career came to uh, quite an abrupt end. Um, I had a pretty bad collision with another player on the field. Who was that player? It was Bully Schmidt, and he broke your jaw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, amongst a whole lot of other things. Yes, you're quite right. That's easy, Arizona. <laughs> Is it not? No, no, I'm not having that. Because Why? there's three universities oh, in Arizona. Three. I'm sorry, I don't know. So, so there's Northern Arizona University. Hold on a second. It would be the Western. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh. Okay. Did I not say Arizona State? <laughs> no, you clearly said Arizona. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to give I'm going to give on. you a point for the Arizona. You see, you're punching hard from the beginning here, right? Oh yeah, might as well, mate. These are serious <laughs> questions. Let me just say 103. That is such a good guess. Right, 12 matches. Um, some of them he didn't actually bat. Um, I think it's 19 innings. You guys are guessing well, eh? Because I know that you didn't know that. <laughs> that, that point's well done. The correct answer is actually 18. We'll see. Okay, uh, what position do I play in 50 inside rugby? Grant told me a scrum half. Is that right? Scrum half is the correct answer. Yes. It is right. In London, uh, 13. Oh no. Hilton, I've given you enough guesses there. It oh. is uh, 14. You were rather yeah. confident. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that, I don't think that one was on Wikipedia. This country has two words. New Zealand? <laughs> yeah, Gavin's, <laughs> Gavin's nodding. Correct, it's New Zealand. Very correct. Ah. Okay. So it was... Brandon McCallum, he caught me on Let's deep. Let's hope you're right, Paz. Have you tricked him into something there? Nah, nah, nah. It is the, I'm 100% correct. Paz, so that was correct, was it? Yeah, he's correct. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, I remember that one came down pretty tight, didn't it? I think we were batting together for for a yeah. while, and then I then I think you got out, and I remember maybe batting with Bobby. Or... Uh, we were supposed to be winning it from the time I was batting with BT. We were supposed to finish it. And then yeah. um, BT threw it away, and then and then I threw it away. Nineteen runs. I think it got tighter than that. Since you wrote it down in your book, you'd remember pretty well, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> you were probably sitting on probably sitting on the balcony, jotting it all down. Those are the stats that crick in for Dan Avery. <laughs> The glue that keeps these matches together, of course, is the match masters. And uh, once again, the team did an incredible job. Each and every one of them bought into the, uh, the matches and created a lot of fun, a lot of banter, and a huge thanks to them. Even good enough for a half point, because I've got the region right there. The Gina, point, come on. The, the half point is a point in this case, uh, John, so I can't give that to you, unfortunately. The last thing that Conservation Games needs is an athlete getting zero in the whole game. 
Has there been one? <laughs> uh, no, but Cumber was about to be the first. <laughs> it was number six, Griff. <laughs> okay, so you, you didn't give me a second go. I did. <laughs> you, <laughs> you were so adamant at the first go. <laughs> right, so. Gavin Rennie is going beyond the call of duty. We asked you to name one, you named all three. You seem to be like that student who wants to sit in the front of the class, Gavin. Um, uh, I, was, I was a student who sat at the back, and when they asked, can you name one person, I would have given one name only. I would have even given the sermon. Yeah, so if, if they stand 33 centimeters, I'd say it's close to a third of that. So I'd say 13 centimeters. Again, you're taking the sit in front of the class a bit too seriously, Gavin. <laughs> You, you, if, if, I was, if I was your teacher, I would have sent you to the headmaster. <laughs> I was always at the back of the class and I was staring out the window at the cricket field. I don't think I, you know, Form <laughs> 2 was the best six years of my life. I don't think I passed one exam. Tell the viewers what it was like. <laughs> Not many Zimbabweans would have been able to have the pleasure of having Australia on uh, international debut. And then, of course, to beat them as you guys did that evening in Cape Town will be a night uh, remembered for a long time in Zimbabwe cricket. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you would testify on that because I do remember seeing you back at the hotel and you were just yeah, let's time. move on please, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> As usual, the conservation questions elicited some very interesting responses. The uh, colour of the scrotum of a vervet monkey was an interesting one for Brendan de Jong. The size of a lion cub when it's born for Tracy Cox and of course the side profile of a male versus female elephant was interesting and then the mating prowess of a male lion. Is it dead or alive? Well I'll have a wild guess. Um, survival of the fittest or something like that? Uh, the correct answer is naked and afraid. Uh, oh, jeez, I've even seen yeah. that. Ah, <laughs> uh, I read about this. 16 months. I can't give you 16 months, unfortunately. I'll go higher and say maybe 18 months. It's actually 15 months, but uh, John, you might have just got your figures confused with the white rhino, which is actually <laughs> a 15 month gestation period. I'm going to laugh at this, but uh, what colour are the testicles or the scrotum of the males? <laughs> <laughs> I've never paid that close attention, Bob. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to go with, with grey. <laughs> Grey. Okay. That's right. Black is grey. Black is grey. Uh, okay. It, it's that's incorrect. So I'm gonna let uh, to wonder try and uh, pick up a bonus point here. Yeah? Okay. I believe they are blue. <laughs> correct. That is correct. <laughs> I don't feel like it'll be that much. I'm gonna go with one. Once. I think it's about four. I think it's about geez. You guys underestimate how powerful a male lion is, don't you? <laughs> actually, it's, it's actually 50 times um, every 24 hours. The play line, ask, okay, ask, so a, ask a family member, Al. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't need to get in. So I'm going to say, I, I went for height and I, and, and I don't know if this is, it, it might be, so I'm going to say, because we look there and we, we cross the river, the fly line there, um, I don't know, uh, the, the Kennedy fly line. Uh, correct. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Diceros Di by Corners. Cheapest, Trevor Gripper. That is our Cheapest, Grips? I mean, Al wow. preparing, preparing. Wow, sir. And, and don't try reword elephant like my wife's just shouted in the background. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to do. Yeah, you were, right? Eh? Well, I I was, I was exactly. So it's not Elefante, so don't try that, Nick. All oh, right. <laughs> so, so maybe think of where the elephant is from. 
Afrikaners or something. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, that's close. Uh, Streaky, you know what it is, eh? I used to. <laughs> you used I'm glad to. I didn't get this question. Okay, so so Afrikaners isn't quite right. Is but I'm going to give you. Uh, what was that? Afrikaner, Afrikaner, or Afrikan. Uh... That's, that's correct. There's a slight hump in the back of the elephant. Um. <laughs> mm. Sucking at straws a little bit here. I couldn't um. tell. <laughs> when a lion is born, how heavy would you expect it to be? 20 kilos. Is that your final answer? Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe 10. 10. 10. Okay. Incorrect. They're, they're much smaller than that, about 1.4 kgs, somewhere there. Yep. 1.5. <laughs> the Eland, Sean, the Latin name, please. Two marks. <laughs> I'm going to pass that one. I'm going to pass that to Pussy. I think he's going to pass that back to you the way he's laughing. I will pass it on back to him. <laughs> wow, if I can see you glad this isn't your question. I'm so glad, thank you. Oh, wow. What is the top speed uh, that an elephant can run? I'll put an elephant at 40, 48. 48. Yeah, just to be random, yeah. It's 40. Oh. You would have learned that at Churchill. I hope you've learned it from all those years ago. <laughs> he was in the nets practicing when they when they when they were geography. I was uh, I was definitely I was definitely practicing. <laughs> um I'll have to take a proper guess there. Um I would have to say basalt. That's correct. Correct oh. answer is basalt. Well done. The Wacky Wilds continued to keep people interested until the end of each and every match. Guys, thanks so much for buying into that. It was a lot of fun, a lot of humor. Well done for some good, very good performances. Elephant, ear flap and charge. Here we go. How was that? Uh, not bad. Ooh. Giraffe rocking gallop. Can you see me there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the rhino run and charge. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> the third one is the giraffe rocking gallop. <laughs> the fish eagle flap and call. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> A hippo yawn and grunt. <laughs> it's the rhino charge and run. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's the hippo yawn and grunt. <laughs> All right, Matthew, thanks a lot for that, mate. Elephant here, flap and chop.
And the elephant starts and it, and it goes, you know, that first it goes. And it's, that's not Dumbo, that's an elephant. And then it goes. Rhino run the spot. Let's do it, Tuki. Rhino run and charge. And the rhino run and charge. Okay. Right, let's go. <laughs> not bad, Chiki. Very good, very good. Thank you. I'm going to go for the giraffe. You're going to go for the giraffe? Yeah. Okay, so I hope that you've painted your crutches. There we go. There we go. Yes. Nice. <laughs> A fish eagle flap and call. <laughs> Can you hear that? Very good. Very, very good. Yeah, very good. <laughs> Elephant ear flap and charge. Mm. So I can imagine that the ears are going like this. So we've got a, a raging ball barking coming out and Big Mule, where are you? It's the rhino run and charge. Alrighty. <clears throat> okay, so so you might like picture the, the the rhino, you know, with it pushing a you know, flipping the dust and... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Elephant ear flap and top. Wow. Oh, that's too easy, that. Can you see, boss? <laughs> hey, so... Obviously, I'm not an angry, angry elephant, eh? I'm gonna give it one of those. This is not a very common one, so I'll be looking okay. for this. Oh, I did not want this one. <laughs> I was hoping at some stage you were gonna grab the fish. Oh, you? I was gonna say. Rhino run and charge. Ooh. <laughs> that's my, that's, that's what I am. <laughs> Second from my left. That one. That's the correct one. That I don't one. believe it. I don't believe what you've just called. I, I dreamt about it. Oh. Dreamt about it. <laughs> right. Oh, giraffe's gone. <laughs> there we go. Uh, well done. Fish eagle flap and call. Since since uh, Tiva managed to use his little youngster, <laughs> that's the next one. There's my baby fish eagle. Hey. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh no, sorry. Oh, uh, bad mummy, bad mummy. <laughs> you get, you get, why don't you give a minus points for you? Go. And of course, after four weeks of being in the conservation games and working through some really interesting details and intricacies of what is involved in frontline conservation with their conservation coaches, the teams and the players. Um, are now talking eloquently about why conservation matters and what wildlife is so important for in future generations. You know, Paz, obviously we, we need money. This, uh, this is, needs money, it needs tourism, and obviously the tourism is going to create the money. So, you know, getting involved in an initiative like this has been absolutely eye-opening. Um, it's, it's been nice to be able to promote a bit of awareness on this side. You know, obviously the Americans love to go over there and see all the animals. Um, they don't understand what goes into, into preserving them and creating the unbelievable, you know, habitats and everything else for, for these animals. So, as I say, it's been extremely eye-opening. Um, you know, they, they sent across a couple of figures, um, Robin and Luke, did, that I had absolutely no idea. So, it's... Uh, it's, it's going to be a long fight, but it's um, an absolutely wonderful cause and um, you know, very, very honored to be a part of it. Um, one, thing, one thing that I think needs to change is uh, just uh, the, the attitude of, of uh, many, many stakeholders. Uh, you know, um, there aren't enough people that, that give it the, the care and the respect uh, that it deserves. And I think if we just grow the awareness and people who have a voice, uh, people who have a platform to speak, sort of raise the awareness and support it, others will follow. And that will create pretty much um, just a support system where our parks are taken care of, um, they're generating um, revenues, um, they're looking after themselves pretty much, and people are enjoying uh, just being in the nature, seeing what nature has to offer. Just, uh, I want to say a really uh, big thanks to all the guys that are trying to, you know, get everything together. And that are still out on the field during these tough times of this pandemic and stuff. And I know they're really struggling through, you know, the funding and the money coming in from tourism. So we really do appreciate what they do. Yeah, it's obviously it takes a lot, um, a big effort and a lot of courage, especially during these times. And I'm, or myself, Ryan, and I'm sure everyone else um, watching, everyone who's part of the conservation games really appreciate it. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, for myself, if, if ever I can do more as well, um, I'm glad to assist in any way. Cool. And where do you see conservation in the next 10 years? Let's strip back what's happened because of COVID um, and what everyone has done, um, you know, to create awareness. So hopefully there's been a lot of people out there who've had time to, you know, be still and take stock of this. If we can carry on with this movement and this traction, um, hopefully things will get a lot better. I, I'm really worried for conservation um, in the next 10 years in Africa. I must be honest with you. I think there are a number of circumstances that are making it very difficult for those people that care for conservation to be successful in their role of creating conservation to the point where not only do they deal with man, but they're dealing with a change in weather patterns, they're dealing with droughts. And I think that we as you know, people that perhaps can make a difference need to be doing more. You know, it's, it's all fun to be doing these kind of things, but you know, action speaks greater than words. And all that you hope is that this movement gain some traction with people that have the financial means to make a valid contribution. Obviously, uh, with everything that's happening at the moment in the world, um, it's just important that we do our part, um, you know, to try to keep um, our conservation going. Um, you know, for personally for me, I um, haven't really been much out in the bush, but it's definitely a place that I'd like to get out to. And hopefully we can preserve that and then our kids can also enjoy uh, what we have.
the bush has always been close to my heart since a tiny child we spent most holidays there um you know rambling around and that kind of thing and i just have so many special memories that are just pristine and you just never know what's going to happen when you're in the bush and those kind of experiences and also working in those kind of conservation areas and stuff like that and seeing the joy that people get coming on their first safari or something like that and experiencing the animals first hand is something you get from a zoo or watching a tv program you can't, you can't replace it and so yeah i think it's just so important that we preserve this for everyone else and for ourselves to keep experiencing um, mm. and not ruin because once it's once it's ruined you can't really just bring it back um so yeah i think this this initiative has been so much fun um yeah just getting back in touch with, with that side and hopefully inspiring other people we neglect all these people living around these areas you know i don't think and don't train them and educate them i don't think we'll get very far and it will probably decline i reckon i think it's 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 all to do with awareness i think um you know the more people are aware um, of, of what you know goes on and I mean just being involved in this game the amount of knowledge that I've got about conservation now is um, you know is, 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 is amazing and um, if you know if with games like this uh, getting the word out for as many people to get involved as possible I think um, if we get the awareness levels you know up, up and high then you um, you know it can it can only be it can only be better if we can get you know the word out if we can um, make sure that you know enough corners um, are reached in awareness um, the better it is for everyone i mean i've been part of a board of a wildlife conservancy area in galana which is next to Savo east national park yeah. for nearly 10 years and you know it's pretty ruthless and and now with the current climate that everyone's talking about the bushmeat uh numbers are just going through the roof um and whilst you sympathize with how desperate everybody is we've also got a responsibility to protect the animals so it's such a tricky balance hey like working in conservation you're it's a bit like sport right you're up in, in your emotions yeah. you're down yeah. again you've lost a game you've got to pick yourself up you've got to get on but i'm enjoying the banter you know sport brings <laughs> Sport brings an ability to take the piss out of each other, and nobody, nobody cares. Um, you know, I've, I had a beautiful photo of uh, of Carl to show him from his Instagram, which was very fetching. Oh, I've, 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 got got a jet. I've got a oh, jet. Oh, well done. You got it. Yeah, I thought that was a, an extra special shot. Nice for that. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. Then. So I wanted to, you know, I was going to put it as my background and zoom, and I thought the bloke doesn't know me. <laughs> So, but that's what it's about. And I guess from sports people, there's always that perspective of banter and fun. And whilst what we're trying to do is is really, really important, and I'm not trying to reduce the impact that it has, yeah. you also have to enjoy the journey. And I think sports people have a lovely balance. Yeah, so I think a huge vote of thanks needs to go to our conservation coaches. Um, because we've really seen uh, not just the interest amongst the players peak, in conservation but also the knowledge um, and it seems like a lot of guys are doing research we're getting a lot of questions coming through so thanks to the coaches and thanks to each one of you uh, let's keep it up uh, let's send the message out there how important conservation is and how important it is to get uh, resources to the people out in the field the uh, meaning of these games was also about points so for our final standings Luke give us the points right so yes as with every sporting competition uh, there's gonna be a winner but let me say that it was very very close and uh, the teams are only separated by 14 points the first team uh, 270 points and the team that came fourth was on 256 points in fourth place we had the leopards on 256 in third place we had the lions on 261 points Buffaloes came second on 265 and the champions of this first series of the conservation games the elephants well done guys so what that means is the pangolin floating trophy will go to team elephant for season one and stay tuned because we have got an incredible ceremony lined up in the next few weeks for the winners to come and take the trophy. See you then. Cheers. Our wildlife needs help. 
tourism to Africa is at an all-time low. You can assist by liking and sharing the conservation games. You can contribute financially by hitting the donate button on the Zambezia.com website. Let's get together and back up the frontline conservation team.